Hello, Scotty. Ah, God bless you, sir. Thank you, for, thank you for, for staying on with us. Tony's a nice lad, and my belated birthday greetings to him. Absolutely. And you, uh, I meant to say to you, Scotty, we have been missing that fine singer, Alan from Stoke. Yes. Now, if Tony's ever had them on the local radio, uh, or even knows about him, I wish Alan would come back on, because not only is he a singer, as you know, he's a plumber. Uh -huh. And he could help w many of us with our... Water works. Indeed. You know, <laughs> then many of us need some help. Yes. I Even just to turn them off at the night time. Well, I'm wanting a storage tank, you <laughs> see. It doesn't leak too much, but still. <laughs> However, what I was going to say... What are you going to do with it when you've stored it? <laughs> oh, well, that's right. That's right, you see. Well, a consultant once told me there's no magic number for visitations during the day. Yes. They said people get it into their head that you divide 24 hours by four, shall we say, and that's the perfect number. He said there is no perfect number. He said some people might go 24 hours, <laughs> 24 <laughs> times, should I say. Absolutely. But uh, he said uh, it's just one of these things. Well, of course, as you know, Scott, even washing machines wear out. Yes. And uh, <clears throat> we've got to get spare parts, but however, I'm working at the moment. Uh, the you had two uh, rather feminist ladies on last week. One had been nominated for the Woman of the Year. Yes, they weren't so much feminist as just a little misguided, I yes, think. Yes, well, I think so, because I, I was thinking one of the great protagonists of feminism, Germaine Greer, yes. was quoted fairly recently as saying that while she had uh, pushed for this sort of thing for ladies, she felt that the present ladies have gone OTT. Yes, no, um, I, I, I agree with that. You know, because, I, I mean, uh, they're really just going over the top in everything that they do. I well, must a Sunday one said to me, if you burn your bra, where are you going to put your fags and mattress? That's right, that's right, you <laughs> see. But uh, uh, I must tell you an amusing story. I was motoring the other day and I was approaching traffic lights. Did you start it with the handle, John? Did you give it a talk? Oh, yes, talk? Sir, yes. I, no, I, I pushed it first and then I uh, jumped in. Jumped it, yes, absolutely. Yes. Just with the, the, the and, and then kept the one leg going. That's right. Yes. Uh, and pedaled along. I was used to a pedal motor, so... <laughs> And I saw the traffic lights, which could only take three cars, and then behind the third car was a yellow box painted there to allow entrance to three or four private houses on the left. So naturally, as you do, I stopped at the beginning of the yellow box, leaving the yellow box entirely clear, and would you believe a lady overtakes me, goes into the box, gives me a wave and a smile. Yes. And she's blocking the road. She's blocking the road. You see, uh, and I thought, well, I'll have to forgive her. Maybe it's... Well, the women driving, I mean, I know I get uh, told why are you sexist, and there's not a sexist bone in my body, but they are so naive and so thick when it comes to driving. Well, and if you leave a space, they will uh, park in it, you know? Yes, no, but I think you were right when you said there is not a, a, an awareness you can call it a practicality. I don't, I think highly, I put the ladies on a pedestal, but when it comes to mechanical or... I've had the same thing that happened with you, John, and I'll tell you where I've had it. You know these temporary traffic lights? Yes. And quite often they put the sign that says, when red light shows, wait here. That's right. And of course I stopped at that sign yes. and a woman overtook me and got in front. Oh, and it makes it bedlam for the oncoming motorist. Well, the motorist. oncoming motorist, you know, had to kind of just get round, yes. and then, of course, she couldn't reverse because they'd all piled up behind me. Yes, I know, I know. But, but oh, by the way, I was delighted to hear Dr. Jill back. Oh, yes. And I... I My I, goodness, she's back. Is she? Is oh, she, yes. she if I'd been on that night, she came back. Last night it was. I would have asked her. I, I was at the doctor's recently, and there was one of our lady partners. And she said, just take your clothes off, John. And I said, where will I put them? She said, on top of mine. <laughs> now, is that, is that a commendation to the BMA, do you think? Uh, for I, I think that really only happens with such uh, physical specimens as yourself. And then when I said to her, well, I'm not too happy. I would like a second opinion. She said, well, come back tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and you see, that well, well, I said to the doctor, I'd like a second opinion. She said, all right, you're ugly as well. That's right. That's <laughs> right. With the, the ladies. But uh, no, 
Well, what I was a bit upset last night is well, with the belligerence of some of your callers towards the asylum seekers. Ah, yes. Where, where has the magnanimity of the dear green place gone? Well, do you know, that actually amazes me, because I would have thought of all the people that can show tolerance and understanding, the people of Glasgow, Precisely. the bulk of whom are made up from folk who came over yes. from Ireland with not Indeed. a thing to their name. Indeed. Indeed. You know, Indeed. and we're just so glad to be shown the warmth and the caring of the dear green place. But you see, uh, the, I don't know. I was reading an article recently, Scott, and I wonder if it applies. Now, I don't wish to be unkind to someone who's living in a house with condensation or antisocial neighbours. Well, I'm glad to hear that, John, so at least I'm out the frame. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but at the same time, many of these people are the type of people, you know, you have met them, Scott, who go through life and they say, now I'm living in a single end, if I had a two-room and kitchen it would be fine. They get the two-room and kitchen, they say, now I wish I had a little semi-detached. Yes. Or if I could just win 10000 to buy a car. Now these are the sort of people, even if they won the lottery, yes. it wouldn't necessarily bring them happiness. Because you've got to be a happy person before these events. I know they can give you a little lift, but you can be miserable. As you know, the, the late Paul Getty, on being interviewed by Alan Wicker many years ago, he said to Mr. Getty, I hope you don't mind me saying, Mr. Getty, but you seem a rather serious person. He said, looking after money is a very serious business. <laughs> well, it's true. I mean, I've said this to people for years. If you need a lot of money, what do you do with it? That's right. You can only sit in the one chair. You've got to put it somewhere. My father used to say you can only wear one suit. Yes, that's it, you see. But uh, I don't know how these people, if you will ever make them I happy. think I'll be quite honest with you. If you're unhappy yes. as a person anyway, yes. then you would the, the, the chances that you will be unhappy if you were wealthy yes. are pretty high. Well, yeah, I remember my father, Scotty, who lived through the depression of the late 20s and the 30s and suffered from it. And while there would be one or two crooks in those days, the height of their day was going into the town and staring up at a building until they had a crowd of a couple of hundred standing and then they would walk away. Yes, that's it. That's it. <laughs> That yes. was a, a great one, that, and it works as well, oh, it works, because yes. both you and I have tried it ourselves. Yes, yes you see, it works, but uh, that, that, that's the thing. How about but, what but the I best think? things in life are free, yeah. and really, to be quite honest with you, yeah, you know, a kind true. word to somebody and what have you, and there'll be a lot of people listening saying, what a lot of Sheikh that McClure talks, well, but if they actually work it out, they'll find out that we're right. I remember an old gentleman saying to me years ago, Scott, and this is why I wish the young would listen to the mature students occasionally. He said, look, when you meet a person in the street and you leave them smiling, you do not know what a great thing you may have accomplished at that particular time in that person's life. Yes. He said, it's a small thing, but if you can leave them laughing, instead of uh, meeting the person who starts to, you know, the, the great Tommy Hanley, the Liverpudlian yes. comedian, it Itma. Itma. And he, that had, man again? he had one of his it's characters. That man again? Yes, it, it is that man again. Yes. And one of his characters was Monolot. Monolot. Who used to say, "Is being so cheerful that keeps me going." Yes. And every character, there was a little message. He had two characters called Claude and Cecil. I forget who the impersonator was that Jack somebody. Mm -hmm. And he, Claude would say, "After you, Cecil." That's and it. Cecil would say, "No." after you, Claude, you see? And I think this sort of message, uh, if you could get it across today to the, uh, the ill-mannered louts that we have, would be quite a good thing. However, without taking up too much of your well, time... Well, somebody I once said to me, always give someone a smile because, uh, you know, it'll allow them to give you one back because they may not have any more to give. 
Well, you know, yes, the great saying too, I mean, in the wizard to the young man next to you, as I was told as a young man, be kind to the office boy because you may meet him on the road down as he's coming up. Absolutely. You see? And Absolutely. You've got to do that. Now, I'd like to wish... I'll tell you, just before you go, John, you, you, you know, you've, you've said an interesting thing and you said, uh, you see, I've always found I leave people laughing. That's right. Even when I don't say or do anything funny That's and right. that worries me. Yes. <laughs> well, well, no, well, you see, you might just be a jovial... Some people I don't think they're laughing with me. I think they're laughing at me. Oh, no, no, no. You know the half-chewed caramel faces that go about Glasgow? Oh, what? Well, I mean, uh, they don't inspire you at all. Uh, but if you leave someone laughing, and I must just say to Tommy, uh, every success for your future health, Tom, and I'm glad that you're signed off. And uh, well done, Catherine, in winning that prize to Portugal. Pity it wasn't three tickets, or you could have taken that well-known orth ornithologist, Mad John. Yes. Who would have been able to tell you the rare birds that were going about. Yes, apparently he's looking for a double-breasted, red-headed bed thrusher. That's right. You see, uh, I'll give you one little uh, story, and then I'll leave the nation with a thought. Uh, the Irish chambermaid making the bed with her colleague, and she said to her, these must be tears in the pillow, the rest of the bed is dry. <laughs> you see? Uh, now, uh, you, you might agree with this. It has been said that one of the greatest contributions to mankind was the, I think it evolved, but they say the man who invented the wheel. Yes. But could the nation please give thought to this? Do you not think the man who invented the other three should get some credit? Uh, should he not get some credit, Scotty? I'm sorry to, to wish the clap on you, but you deserve it. Now, now <laughs> and I, if you can recover from that, you can come on tomorrow now, night. Now, I guess I, I'll <laughs> close with saying this is Ari of John for Scotty McClure's National Megaphone in 96.3 FM, Glasgow. Back to you, Scotty. Dinky-doo, Dinky sir. Do. Good night Dinky and God do. bless. Bye-bye. Dinky-doo, bye-bye now. There we are, RAF John, telling it like it is. Marvellous.